Right, in this video, we're going to look at the loop at group by statement um, and see how we can use it to better group data in a more meaningful way for a user. This was specifically requested by a subscriber, Elias Kekakos, so thanks for that. And uh, it follows on very well from the reduce operator, which we covered in a previous video. I'll have that video um, as well as any resources I've used um, in the uh, description below. Um, and I'm going to follow along um, uh, from an example in a blog post written by Horst Keller um, because he has described it very well there. So yep, that'll also be linked in the description. So let's jump in and start by creating our or getting some instance class scaffolding in here. And we'll call it LCL group, LCL uh, loop group by something like that. Um, then let's go ahead and grab the data we want to run through in group and see what it looks like before we go any further. So I'm going to use uh, SPFLI, which is from the S flight example from SAP, which I think most of us know. So let's go ahead and select everything from SPFLI. And we're going to put that into table data, local table, SPFLI. And uh, I forgot to escape that. Perfect. So let's go ahead and see what that table looks like in the output. Uh, CL underscore demo underscore output. And we're going to just go ahead and display that local table SPFLI. Full stop, and we should be able to go ahead and activate that. And once we've activated it um, in VS Code, obviously uh, we can press F5, and that should open up the GUI, and we can go ahead and execute it. And, ah, I made a small mistake. I forgot to call my class, which I do all the time. I need to, I need to fix that. So uh, start a selection, LCL, loop at group by, create. And once I've got my object, I can use method chaining to call the run method, which has got all of my code in it. Save that, activate F5 again, and that should work. Lovely, execute. And this is the data I get. So um, we, we want to take this data and group it, let's say by, um, what do we do in the example, city from, where is that? City from, here we go, city from. So we want to group it by city from, and let's group it by um, carrier as well. So carrot, carrot or carrier ID rather. So we want to create an output that um, takes this data and groups it specifically by carrier ID and city from. So let's start building that. So first thing we want to do is we're going to get rid of this. Now that we have our data here, we want to loop. The first thing we want to do is loop through it and create some groups. So we're going to loop at local table SPFLI. And let's put it into a structure that we'll create on the fly. SPFLI. And 
once we've done that, we can close our loop here. And so um, what we've got is um, a loop that runs over this local table full of data that we've got, and we're going to put it in this structure. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add the group by clause. And in the group by clause, we want to set a key that the group by is going to hold um, behind the scenes. And so what we're going to do is call carrier as our first one. And we're going to pull that directly from here. And we're going to use carried or carrier ID. And let's also specify our city from, and we'll call it CITY underscore from, and that is going to equal our structure and city from. So all we've done here is we are looping through our table um, into a structure. We group, we're creating our group. So we're not actually um, starting the loop. We are just simply running through everything and grouping it. We're setting a key and we want to run that as uh, a sending for now. And finally, we want to assign a field symbol to that group. So we're going to assigning field symbol, local field symbol, and we'll just call it group. And that should be fine. What's the problem here? Ah, there we go. So now that we have our loop, we are grouping everything and we're going to have everything in ascending order. And we're going to assign a field symbol, which we'll access later, um, which will contain the group that was created according to this key. So before we move on, we need to make sure we have access to our members. So we need to create somewhere to put them. Um, so let's call it members. Let's create a variable called members. And let's say like our table above. So that follows the same format as the um, table we get from SPFLI, the local table, internal table rather. So um, now that we have that loop completed, we are going to um, create a second loop or a what would seem like a nested loop, but it's not actually a nested loop. It's where we are going to loop through each group and create an output. And we're going to access the members created in this initial or first loop. So let's create our second loop here. Loop at group. So now we're using the loop at, after we've used the group by for a standard loop, creating our groups, we're now going to loop, whoops. We're now going to loop at that group and um, we're going to loop at LFS group. And we're going to assign a field symbol for this called LFS underscore SPFLI group. So we know we're accessing the group and so we're just naming our field symbol accordingly. Um, so let's just close off that loop as well. So now that we're in the second loop, we're going to run through each of the groups that we are going to, that we've pulled from this top loop here. And we're going to fill our members variable here with the data. So we're going to use value. Um, we're going to use value, uh, so value, and obviously we're going to pull the type dynamically. And we're going to use the base keyword to pull 
the members from local field symbol just call SPFLI group which is here so now we're accessing the reference to um, each of the groups that we are going to loop through if that makes sense so members uh, equals value um, any type or uh, pull it up dynamically using base members which come from so the base members which come from this group here so we don't need that so once we, so uh, now that we've run through that loop we've um, created or we've we're now adding these members of the group that we created up here and we're pulling them into this variable here and once we've done that we're just going to up or we're going to use cl underscore demo output to write it first of all so we're going to write each time we we receive the group and so as we run through each group we're going to call uh, cl underscore demo underscore output right because we're going to write it to the display that we'll call now members um, and then once we've finished that and run through both we'll run through the final loop here we're going to display it so see underscore demo underscore output display which will display everything that we've written so let me just get this down first display so <clears throat> at each group so now we've looped at each group we're now creating or adding our members here oh uh, it's very important that we clear members at each iteration of the loop if i could spell members so let's just separate this out so we can see so um, we've got all of our data from SPFLI into our internal table um, we've created a members variable here which is like um, this table here because uh, which is like the SPFLI table type because that's where we're going to put all the data and that's the format we're going to display it in we then have our first loop where we're going to loop at our table, internal table, um, and we're going to get it into our structure here. We're going to group it by this particular key, in our case, the carrier and city from, and here is the um, value that we're going to put, or the value that we're going to use rather. We're going to set it ascending, and we're going to assign a field symbol to that newly created group referenced here, um, making sure that at each iteration we have a clears members variable to, in preparation for writing to it and then writing it to the output. We then loop at the group we've created, which comes from here. We assign it another field symbol or another reference, which is here. We then fill our members variable using the value operator here. Um, with the type pulled dynamically, grabbing the base members, which are the members of the group, which comes through, which comes from here is effectively, and obviously is now referenced here with the second field symbol. And as we do that, we're going to write the members to the display. And after we've run through each of the different groups, we're going to display it. So, if we go ahead and activate and press F5, which will open the GUI, and we execute, our output looks like this. So you can see our members here, which was which contains each of the groups. Uh, in this case, there was only one carrier ID for American Airlines and only one city from, but down here there were three and it's outputted all three and this could be an incredibly quick 
and useful way to output the data for a user um, or even prepare the data for further down the line, depending on, on how you want to use it. Um, so that is a very simple example of loop at group by, uh, which you can use to group your data in a meaningful way. Um, if you guys have any questions or uh, anything doesn't make sense, or perhaps you want me to go into the example in a bit more detail, uh, let me know down in the comments. Um, if you guys have any other topics that you'd like me to cover in the Advanced ABAP series, again, leave a comment down below. Um, and yeah, um, if you guys like the video, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.